Welcome, Damon, to Writer's Series. Thanks so much, Sasha. I appreciate you for having me, and I look forward to this opportunity. I'm just grateful to be on with you today. What appealed to me regarding your professional profile was there's the theme of content creation, which has gained momentum in the last decade by a lot. And I am sure that content creation fuels your roles as a speaker, an author, an educator, a trainer, and I could have sworn you're also a minister. Yes, I am. And one other title, I'm a music producer as well. <laughs> and I am sure that there's plenty of writing going on. Can you share right. when you were initially introduced to the craft of writing? Okay. Well, actually, I'd have to go way back to high school when I first started. And I would say my 11th grade English teacher noticed that I really had a talent for writing. And I'll never forget a particular piece I had written that the, the everyone in the class had to share their information. And whatever it was that I wrote, I can't even remember it. It just touched people's hearts. Everyone just loved it. And I'll never forget my teacher just encouraging me to write more. Now, professionally, I started in 04 when I, I wrote my first book and I published it in 05, The Great Taste of Success. So I would say, like I said, a professional journey of being a, an, a published author started in, in 04 when I wrote my first piece and then published it in 05. And I've been writing since then. I've published three more books there. The, a Greater Taste of Success was the second. And then I did Revelation Rightly Revealed. My last one was Living, Loving, Leading. But I've also, you know, been featured in many publications, the Huffington Post, Red, Red Book, you name it. You know, we've had two, over 200 features as far as uh, our content is concerned. But, uh, but yes, that's where it started. So we're looking at about 19 years ago, uh, me starting that writing journey. With your very first book, when you were writing it, did you anticipate how life would unfold and attract more success and opportunities for you to contribute? Actually, I did. That was, of course, the hope. And it's ironic that you said that because the name of it, of course, was The Great Taste of Success. But I wasn't even initially planning on writing a book. I'll tell you what happened. I would get just profound statements that would just pop into my head, come into my spirit, and I would literally write them down. And then all of a sudden, I began to think about publishing a book. And what I did, I I, I just come got gathered the information what that I had compiled, the different quotes I had. And then I was like, well, man, I could write a book. And then because at the time I had 22 of them, and I'll never forget on a Saturday, I sat down and I wrote 28 more for a total of 50. And so that first book is The Great Taste of Success, 50 Potent and Inspirational Proverbs. And what I had to do from there is go back and do the research and get the information to further expound on those proverbs. But that's the funniest part. I was not initially setting out to be an <laughs> author. I was just writing. It was just a passion of mine and profound quotes were coming. I would just write it down. The next thing you know, I wrote a book. And I always try to encourage any aspiring writers or new writers, beginning writers, always keep your material because you'll look up years later and you'll see how it's relevant or it fits a current piece that you're working on. And therefore, just always keep everything as best as you can because it'll it'll be relevant. What guidance would you have for content creators today? Because... There's a lot of guidance out there, and we also know that there's good guidance and some that should be ignored. Some people think that they need to come up with a lot of quantity over quality versus quality over quantity. Yes, I always say produce quality and quantity will come. And as you're stating, this generation, as you said, they have it backwards. They just want to put out all kinds of material but not be concerned with the quality, whereas it's the it's vice versa. If you get very good quality and then, you know, the quantity will increase as far as drawing people in, and then you can create more, more content then. But I always tell people and encourage them as far as quality is concerned, always, first of all, know what you're passionate about, know what you're skilled at and what's dear to your heart. Make sure you write about those things and you create content 
that mimics and, and exudes those concepts and characteristics, but also try to be inspirational and encouraging. There's a lot of, as you stated, things that shouldn't be out there that, that is very <laughs> discouraging, messy, you know, it's just depressing, but write things that are inspiring that's going to really serve as a catalyst to ignite and spark people's lives and point them in the right direction. And, you know, as you do that, also, I always tell Arthur's, as, as creatives, we have what I call a season or seasons rather of inspiration. And these are times where you really feel an unction and motivation to create. Take advantage of those times because in other times you'll fall into what's called the slump or writer's block. But if you take advantage of your seasons of, of creation and inspiration, then when it when you hit those writer's block times, you'll have enough information and content compiled Whereas you're not suffering because you are, you already have information that's prepared and it's quality. And that's what you want to do. Take your time, you know, create some good quality stuff. And then as you do that, you'll get your system. You'll be able to create more and more and increase your quantity, but always start off with quality. Just knowing who you are, know what you love, know what you're competent about and then and passionate about it and, and work on those things. That's what I would have. That is a great productivity tip. And you also touch upon the the content itself. As for yourself, do you decide what content you want to create or do you allow the market to kind of guide you? I actually decide the content. And that's what happens. We have to get back to the days of being the actual trendsetters and trailblazers as in that we're setting the trends. We're blazing the trail. We're not just following the trends and just following what everyone else is saying. And like you say, trying to just be with the, uh, stick with the analytics and just kind of fit in. No, we have to stand out. We have to be on a cutting edge. We are the content creators. The key word is creating. And so that means you have to be the first one to do it. But we're living in a society where everyone wants to kind of play it safe and just mimic what someone else is doing and put a little spin on it. But no, I like to be original, whatever I can say I'm passionate about, whatever I feel divinely inspired to create. That's what I'm creating and that's what I'm going to put out and, you know, hope in the hopes that it, it really touches people. But at the end of the day, I know that I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm casting my, my values and I'm sticking with my, my, my core principles that lead and guide me. And if I'm putting that out, that kind of content, then, you know, of course, the hope you want it to be received. But at the same time, as long as you're releasing it and doing your part and you're making sure it's quality, the results are not really up to you. It's up to the universe and up to, you know, people just being receptive to it. And sometimes it just takes time. You know, you have to build it. It's not going to come overnight. But as you constantly produce and you're consistent with it, people will be drawn to you and they'll support you. But you want to be known for having that quality kind of Damon, you just made my day Go because ahead. I feel and believe the same thing that either you are the creator or you're going to be just floating around like a leaf in the wind. Not knowing where you're going to land. That's so true. I agree. And nowadays, there are a lot of writers and slash creators who put out their work. Either they're looking for validation or they turn it into a numbers game of whether things are light or not. And they throw in the towel too soon. What guidance do you have for people who may be going through a season of listening to cricket? You just keep on going. Like you said, one of the key, I would say, elements you have to have as a writer or just content creator, period, is perseverance, which means you have the ability to persist despite the hindrances, obstacles, and opposition. Because you're going to have those seasons where it seems like you say you hear the year in the crickets. It looks like everything's just hitting a wall. Nothing's breaking through. You're not getting calls. You're not getting engagements. You're not selling. It's like, oh my, what's going on? But once you know within yourself, hey, I'm destined to be this author, I'm destined to be this content creator, I'm destined to be this writer, then you just continue doing that even when you don't feel like it, even when it, it looks as though things are just dim and glim, I mean, gloomy and like nothing's going to happen, but you just be consistent with it. And initially, I mean, and, and after a while, things will shift. Things will always, always turn around. Life is full of seasons. You know, you have your highs, your lows. I always say the ebb and the flow. You're not all, always on a mountaintop. You're not always in a valley. You're in different positions in different seasons. And it's you have to be flexible and you have to have adaptability 
to adapt to whatever season you are in. And like we said, sometimes you're going to have those seasons where you take some L's, but know that your winning season is coming. You're going to win again. You're going to succeed. You're going to break through and always have the mind frame of expanding your audience. I think that's what um, hinders a lot of creatives because they just get stuck on their initial audience. Well, no, you have to constantly grow your audience. You have to constantly make new connections. You have to expand your network. And as you do that, you're going to always keep and, and obtain new customers, new clients, new readers, new supporters. You earlier mentioned productivity tip. What are two lessons that you have learned in your writer's journey so far, whether it was a lesson that was shared with you and you applied it or something that you discovered that has made your life easier as a content creator slash writer? I think the, the main thing would be just kind of being organized with your, your content and your ideas and also doing deep dives on your, your content. I think sometimes in that rush, like we were mentioning earlier to just create so much content, there are some concepts that we can, we can just explore and create lots of content off that one concept. But I see sometimes people just do surface information, just give some general stuff, and then they're trying to go on to the next. I give you a prime example. I've started doing some Facebook Lives on Thursday. And what I do, I do deep dives on just certain concepts. And instead of it just being one session, it'll turn into two, three, or four on that same concept. And that's what I'm saying. You can, you can expand the longevity of your work. And just expand the content by doing deeper dives. That's I think that's one pr productivity hack that I've learned. And it's, it's proven successful because, as I'm saying, you can turn like one lesson and one session into several. You can turn one book into a, a, a trilogy or something. And, and just having that mind frame of just kind of doing more than one uh, on that particular concept or topic and just expanding on it, expounding on it further so that you can just add longevity to it and expand it. But I think that's one of the keys I've learned, especially here late, lately. And um, I, I think it, it it is proven successful. And I, I think one other tip is just expanding your expertise and the concepts that you write about. And that's going to be based on your experiences Get out and make sure you're living life, you know, enjoy things and, and don't be one dimensional, but learn different areas of life, experience different areas. And then that's going to make your content richer. And it's going to also just uh, expand your platform from which you can speak and write and create content on. But if we're just kind of stuck in one area, then it limits us profoundly and we, we don't want. You also specialize in talent development. Yeah. When it comes to developing talent in the realm of writing and speaking as a speaker yourself, what guidance do you share with your audience? Well, when it comes to, like you say, talent development, just overall, especially speaking and writing, I actually have a, a course, Communicate, Network, and Collaborate, that I, let, I, I launched last November. But it's all about, first of all, you know, having your vision of where you're going, what you're trying to do, you know, knowing your mission and your objectives, what you're trying to accomplish. And once you have the vision of where you're going, your mission objective, then all, all of a sudden creating your plan to get there. So the plan is what are the actions that you're going to take to reach a mission and objectives and also to fulfill your vision. So everything needs to align. And that what that's where it goes back to that organization, what I was talking about earlier. And so, you know, you want to be able to, when I, well, I give 10 tips in my, my speaking course, but one of the things is just speaking on things that you're, you're competent with, you know, things that you have knowledge of. And I say competence breeds confidence. When you know what you're talking about, you're going to be confident by default. And that's why I keep saying, you know, experience things that way, you know, it in and out and you're just not bringing forth someone else's research. Now, of course, you do your research, you get your information, but test it out as well. And that way you're speaking from a personal standpoint, as opposed to just a research standpoint, it'll be an experiential standpoint instead of just research. But yes, just, just like I say, getting organized, knowing what your vision is, your mission, then putting that plan that's going to help you stay on course, stay on task. And, um, you know, just also, we, I teach people about creating your elevator pitch, being able to pitch what you do in short term 
in short words, you know, in so many seconds or a minute or so. And then also just having an extensive layout of what you what you can speak on, what kind of content you can create and what you can, you know, teach and, and lecture on as well. But you, you want to know, as I say, what you're good at. You know, I, I asked four questions. What are you skilled at doing? What are you passionate about doing? What do you do that has a, a, a profound impact on others or it's effective? And then, you know, what content and concepts can you speak on and you just feel as though, you know, they're the greatest things and you're so passionate about them that, you know, it just comes naturally. You don't even have to, it's not a um, going against the grain and it's not a, a challenge, but it just flows with you naturally. Those are the things you want to speak on and those are the kind of lectures and speeches and content that you want to create that come and emanate from that place. You provided a tip that writers should collect and not discard any of their creations. Is there any type of content that you believe should be retired at any later point in time? I wouldn't say it should be retired, but one thing I, I would mention, and I'm glad you brought that back up, is just modifying the content. Because sometimes the place that you wrote in it and what the, the what well, the place you were or the place that say society what was in at the time it might not fit just perfectly now, but always you're able to go back and make minor adjustments, uh, minor adjustments and modifications to make it fit the current time, you know, and trends or whatever you're trying to fit. But uh, but yes, I you know I do encourage people to not discard it. But you can always, to me, it's better to have something that you can adjust and modify as opposed to not having anything at all. And I always tell people, even with a plan, I say, have you just a skeleton plan? You don't have to have the meat and the bones and everything on it. I mean, the meat and the muscle and everything on it, but just have the bare bones. And that way you can add the stuff later. And it's the same concept with your content. Just having something, at least a base and a foundation and then later on, if you need to make the adjustments, it's easier to do that than as opposed to creating that foundation and starting with a base. And finally, Damon, are you working on any new books? And you're welcome to let audiences know where they could find you. Okay, yes. I, my, I'm, the next book I think I'm going to publish is a spiritual book. And it'll. I'm looking at maybe next year. Someone had asked me this recently, and I was like, I just haven't felt the release to put it out yet. Now I've been working on it for years, and the irony of it, the last book I published, Living, Loving, Leading, um, I was working on this book before that, but then that book, just the inspiration came very hard on that one, and I had to put it out. But what I'm doing right now is just promoting my school, Real Life Academy, um, .thinkific.com. And I have my courses that we're promoting, as I had mentioned earlier, the Communicate Network and Collaborate course, which comes with an ebook that was published with it. So that's one of my my latest things that I put out. But uh, but yes, the, the, that next book, I think it's going to be a spiritual book called The King's Dominion. And I'm looking at possibly next year um, releasing that, publishing that book. But uh, yes, I can be found. My website is Kit Real. That's K-I-T-R-I-L consult c-o-n-s-u-l-t dot com and if you go there all of my information is there and i'm on facebook i'm on twitter i'm on instagram i'm all over the place if you just google my name you'll find interviews and published works and all of my content so mr damon thank you for sharing a slice of your writer's journey today Thank you so much, Sasha, for having me. And I hope this has been inspirational and informative to all of your listeners. 